What's up, Daily Crazers, and Happy New Year! My name's Batmana, and this is my top 5 most obscure games of 2014. So, uh, what do I mean by obscure? Now, these are games that aren't your normal pop culture game. I'm taking into account the diversity of gameplay mechanics and unique stories and visuals. These are games I think made monumental steps towards a different type of game style and uh, pretty much changed how gameplay is. I think there are a lot of games like that this year. So, we're going to start off our list with. Number five, Among the Sleep. Uh, this game was just really different considering you're a baby. Um, there hasn't been any other gameplay that you are at the height of a you know toddler and you're basically seeing the world through the eyes of this little baby. And as you start the game, you basically travel around the room and find different nooks and crannies um, all along with your trusty teddy bear. As you go through the game, you catch glimpses of what's really going on at home for this baby. You see what the baby is seeing, and the only way the baby can comprehend what is happening is by portraying different events as enemies in the game. So you're seeing personal demons, pretty much. There are some scary parts, I'm not gonna lie. There's some creepy parts, um, but those are the demons that this kid can only comprehend. Um, I thought the ending was pretty shocking, and I didn't really see it coming, but I won't ruin it for you. You'll just have to go play it for yourself. Number four. Transistor. Transistor is made by the same people that made Bastion, and I really liked that game too, so I thought, why not try this one? Uh, but it is such a beautiful game, character and story-wise. The characters and the art style of this game is really, really pretty. I really liked it. The main character's name is Red, and she basically lost her voice because the government tried to kill her. She finds this thing that's called the Transistor, and the Transistor can collect souls, and by doing this, you can collect different souls from different people that you see throughout the game and then you can read up on their personal histories and stories and find out what's really going on in the city and what is the government trying to do here and why do they want her killed? That's the main thing that keeps you guessing throughout the whole game. I really really enjoyed the relationship between the Transistor and Red and their chemistry together. Red can't speak because she lost her voice and she used to be a great singer um, so the whole game is narrated by the transistor. It's just, it's so wonderful to see how they connect with only one person talking. And I thought they did that really, really well. The music was outstanding. It was so odd, like beautiful. I downloaded the whole transistor soundtrack because it was just so good. Um, I'll insert a little clip here of her humming because, or one of the songs, it's so good. The only problem I found with this game is the gameplay mechanic. Uh, it's kind of a turn-based style. It was kind of hard to maneuver and figure out where the enemies were because it was all turn-based, but I mean, that was a good chunk of the game and I thought it was okay. Not my favorite though. I think it's really obscure because it's a different kind of point-and-click game. The mechanics for the gameplay style is a little confusing, but it's different for sure. And I just love the the story and how the story is portrayed through the transistor is just really different and I thought it was a really really good game. You guys should definitely go try it out. Number 3, Broken Age Act 1. It's a point and click adventure game and it has a fantastic story and really really good artwork. I, I thought this art style, it's cartoony but it's so pretty. The story of this is the obscure part. It's actually two different stories and you can pick which one you want to play as first. So either you can follow the story of the space adventurer Shay with a overprotective computer mother that makes these adorable little crochet creatures and eventually he goes on this big 
adventure in space and you kind of figure out what's going on. And then the other story is Vela, who is going to be eaten by this monster called Magtrathra. And This is basically the first five minutes of the game, but she's going to get eaten by this monster and don't know why. These two stories are so different, so unrelated, so why would they put these two stories in the same game? And you keep uh, questioning that, and you can switch back and forth throughout the game, but you keep asking yourself that, like, through while you're playing, why are these stories so important? The game leaves you with a massive cliffhanger at the end that I was just like, oh my god, I just couldn't believe what was going on. I thought it was really, really, really neat. Thankfully, Act 2 is in the works, and it will be released soon in 2015, and I am looking so forward to this. I want to figure out what's going to happen next. Look, there he is! Number 2, Smite. Smite is an online strategy game, and it's completely different than the ones that have already been out, such as League of Legends and Dota, um, and all those other League clones. So far, these types of games like League have dominated the MOBA industry, and I think Smite brings a breath of fresh air to the industry. It brings a new factor because most of these other games have been a top-down uh, isometric view, so you see the whole battlefield while Smite is a third-person point of view, and this small adjustment works really, really well, I thought. Having it be the third-person view, you feel right in the middle of the action, and you have to literally look around to see different, um, different enemies, and you use WASD to move around. Another really interesting thing about Smite that I think makes it obscure is it's all based on gods from different pantheons, like like Greek gods, Norse gods, Egyptian gods, etc. They're all different gods. The character design for these kind of gods are amazing. Like, they're so detailed. Each of the gods have their own lore, and you can read up on them, and it kind of gives another side of history with this kind of game, which I think is really interesting. Unlike League, that they're made up characters, and you have to kind of learn that world. Instead of being a fantasy, these things are actually real to people and um, you get to learn about different cultures and I just find that factor really really cool. The only thing I found on the downside of this is some of the female characters are I I think they put more detail into the male characters than the female characters because a lot of the female characters look alike and another thing is their voice acting they use the same voice actors for a lot of the different characters so they all kind of sound the same with different accents. But other than that, I thought this game was really, really cool. And I am a huge fan of uh, Greek mythology and Egyptian mythology. So I just thought that learning about the different kind of things and seeing how the Smite developers had their take on the different gods and mythologies that I just thought this was really cool. And it's a fun game to play. Now it's time for my number one most obscure game of 2014, Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. I am so excited for this game. I got this game for Christmas and I'm not, I'm not all the way through it yet, I'm probably close, but guys, this game is so good. I love mysteries, I love those kind of stories, but I love the Professor Layton games and the Phoenix Wright games. Those in itself are pretty obscure. Professor Layton is a private detective from London, and he's accompanied by his little assistant, Luke. And they go around solving mysteries in London and other places. And the whole game is based around these different puzzles. And you have to do puzzles to get through the game. Phoenix Wright, on the other hand, is a defense attorney. And he's accompanied by his assistant, Maya, uh, who's some kind of psychic. You basically have to play as a lawyer you use different clues and things like that to figure out what actually happened in the scenario and you have to um, you have to call people out on their lies. Um, so 3DS game, the other Professor Layton and Phoenix Wright games were for the DS, I think. I think there are a few games for the 3DS for the Professor Layton series. But in this game, you start off in London with Professor and Luke and they're 
talking about witches and mysterious things and this girl Estella shows up and is coincidentally talking about witches all this weird stuff happens then right after that happens you jump over to Phoenix Wright and Maya and go for a trial for this Estella girl um, and you have to do this whole trial thing and figure that out they both get transported to to this strange town called Labyrinthia and they um, they meet in a different way I don't want to spoil it but guys like it's just so obscure because when have you seen a game where a lawyer and a private detective are in the same game and you have to do puzzles and figure out mysteries I love puzzle games and I love you know figuring out mysteries so this is basically two in one the humor in it is really good and um I actually play it with my sister and we do all the voices and it's so bad but it's a lot of fun if you're like me and you've loved the professor layton and the phoenix Wright series this game is definitely for you you need to try it because it's just so amazing like i can't even describe how cool it is and the story is well written surprisingly um some of the stories for professor layton i haven't really liked i mean i've liked them but i can't they're pretty much predictable but so far, like, I don't know where this is going, and um, I'm really excited to see how it ends. Objection. Okay, and that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and you know, let me know in the comments below what you think was your most obscure game from 2014 that you thought you played or that should have been on this list. Thank you for watching The Daily Craze. I'll be here every other Thursday. So Thursday is my upload day. Check out my main channel if you want to see some let's plays of me playing some games. I have right now um, some games of me and my roommate playing Minecraft. You can check the link in the description below and I'll see you all um, in two weeks on Thursday. So bye!